A blazar in a distant galaxy exhibiting periodic flaring is believed to indicate the presence of a binary pair of black holes. Recent observations appear to support this interpretation, but also raise questions as some aspects deviate from their model predictions. In this video, I aim to reinterpret the data using Eric Lerner's Plasmoid framework. Can this model explain the variability in characteristics of the emissions without requiring two black holes? Blazer OJ287 is one of the most well-studied and historically significant active galactic nuclei, first discovered in 1891. This discovery was part of a systematic search for variable stars, and OJ287 was initially catalogued as such due to its apparent brightness fluctuations. However, it wasn't until the 1960s, with the advent of radio astronomy, that OJ287 was identified as a radio source, leading to its classification as a blazar, a type of active galactic nucleus with a relativistic jet pointing towards Earth. Subsequent observations across the electromagnetic spectrum revealed its peculiar double-peak optical outbursts, which appeared to reoccur regularly. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, these unique light curves led to the speculation that OJ287 was a binary black hole system. This hypothesis was proposed to explain the regular double-peaked optical outbursts observed in the blazer's light curve. The model gained traction after observations showed a consistent 12-year periodicity in these outbursts, suggesting a secondary black hole perturbing the accretion disk of the primary supermassive black hole. Early theoretical work and simulations supported this idea demonstrating that the gravitational interactions between two black holes could produce the observed flaring pattern. Over the years, further observational evidence and refined models have strengthened the case for a binary black hole system in OJ287. In a new paper, researchers presented their findings on a recent significant flaring event. The study focused on the optical and radio observations conducted during the flare and provides a detailed analysis of the accompanying spectral changes. The researchers utilised a combination of data from various observatories and telescopes to capture the event across multiple wavelengths, providing a comprehensive view of the flare's characteristics. The team observed an intense optical flare, which they then meticulously tracked to understand its evolution and peak brightness. The flare displayed a significant change in the RI spectral index, indicating alterations in the energy distribution of the emitted light. Concurrent radio observations revealed an increase in emissions, which was associated with the optical flare. This correlation suggests a close connection between the processes driving the emissions at these different wavelengths. They noted a significant change in the RI spectral index, indicating a new radiation component. The polarization variations observed during the flare's rise supports this finding. Based on the source size constraints they propose, that the new radiation component is likely originating from the jet of the secondary black hole. What is important to understand is that they are not actually observing two jets. Instead, they explain the variations in the emissions using the idea of two black holes, with one interacting with the accretion disk of a larger one. Having recently re-looked at Eric Lerner's plasmoid model, I want to see if we can actually interpret these findings within the context of Lerner's model. Eric Lerner's plasmoid model proposes that quasars and active galactic nuclei are powered by giant plasma formation called plasmoids, rather than by supermassive black holes alone. In this model, plasmoids are self-contained, highly energetic structures that can account for the observed emissions and variability in the AGNs. In the paper, the flare on November 12, 2021, is attributed to a secondary black hole, impacting the primary black hole's accretion disk. In the plasmoid model, such a flare could be interpreted as a result of intense magnetic reconnection events. According to Lerner's model, the jets observed in AGNs are not continuous streams, but rather pulsate, or pulse intermittently. Each pulse of the jet is powered by a specific part of the plasmoid. As part of the plasmoid is used up and undergoes a reconnection process, where magnetic field lines within the plasma reconnect and release energy, a new branch or segment of the plasmoid becomes active. This process results in a series of pulses where each pulse corresponds to a localised release of energy and material from the plasmoid into the jet. Reconnection events also lead to flare events in AGNs. Flares are characterised by sudden increases in brightness across different wavelengths, such as optical, x-ray or gamma. 
The energy released during a reconnection event can manifest as an increase in emissions from the AGN, which is observed as a flare. Changes in the spectral index and polarization can also be accounted for by the magnetic reconnection process. As the plasmoid forms and evolves, they can emit across different frequencies, and their magnetic field structure can affect polarization. When considering the source size constraints in the paper, they use this to suggest that the new radiation must be coming from the jet of the secondary black hole. Eric Lerner's plasmoid model offers an alternative explanation for the observed flare in OJ287 without requiring a secondary black hole. Instead, it suggests that the flare could result from a large-scale magnetic reconnection event occurring further from the central region. This interpretation aligns with the observed spectral and polarization changes, as well as the intense optical emissions through the dynamics of plasmoid formation and evolution. The timing of the flares in the binary black hole model is linked to the orbital dynamics and the impact of the secondary black hole. In Lerner's model, periodicity is explained through cyclical magnetic field configurations and reconnection events. Depending on the size of the plasmoid and the size of the source plasma disk, the plasmoid generates jets for a limited time, until the branch is used up. It will then enter a quiescent phase while the plasmoid continues to twist and compress. Then a new branch is reconnected, producing a sudden release of energy and beam production resumes once more. One interesting aspect of the paper is that the observations of a flatter spectrum during the flare in the R-band, which is the visible light, was unexpected and not typical of what was previously observed and theorised for such events in OJ287 or similar AGNs. Typically, when astronomers observe flares or intense emission events in AGNs like OJ287, they expect to see changes in the intensity of light across different wavelength or frequencies. These changes often result in spectra that are steeper, where intensity decreases more rapidly with increasing frequency because of the dominance of certain emission processes, such as thermal radiation or line emission. In contrast to the expectation, the flare observed in OJ287 exhibits a flatter spectrum during the R-band observations. A flatter spectrum means that the intensity of light varies less with frequency. It remains relatively constant or decreases more slowly compared to what is typically seen at optical frequencies. Flatter spectra are more commonly associated with emissions seen at radio frequencies, where processes like synchrotron radiation and relativistic particles dominate. The unexpected flatter spectrum challenges current models and theories about the emission mechanism in AGNs during such intense events. It suggests that physical conditions or mechanisms responsible for emitting light during the flare may differ significantly from what was previously understood. Lerner's model suggests that plasmoids can emit radiation through processes such as synchrotron radiation and inverse Compton scattering, which are common in jets of AGNs. The flatter spectrum observed during the flare could potentially be explained by these emission mechanisms operating within a plasmoid. For instance, synchrotron radiation from relativistic particles in the plasmoid could lead to a spectrum that remains relatively flat across a wide range of frequencies, depending on the magnetic field strength and the particle energies. The rapid onset and decline of flares, as well as the changes in spectral index, could be attributed to dynamic processes within the plasmoid, such as changes in particle acceleration or magnetic field configuration. While Lerner's plasmoid model provides an alternative framework to black hole-centric models for explaining AGM behaviours, Observational support for plasmoid existence and characteristics in specific AGNs like OJ287 is still being explored. The observations of flatter spectra during flares aligns with the idea that plasmoids can produce emissions that vary differently from those expected in more traditional models, focused solely on accretion disk dynamics around supermassive black holes. Applying Lerner's plasmoid model to explain specific observations requires detailed comparisons with existing data and theoretical predictions. It involves testing whether the model can consistently explain the variability, spectral characteristics and other observed phenomena in AGN like OJ287. Unlike the mainstream model which benefits from decades of research and established numerical methods, Lerner's plasmid model is still in its infancy. Developing computational tools and simulations for this model from scratch adds to the complexity Beyond Lerner's initial paper, there are no comprehensive working models that can simulate the expected behaviour of these plasmoids in detail. Developing such models is computationally challenging due to the complex and dynamic nature of plasmoids, 
which involves intricate processes such as magnetic reconnection, particle acceleration, and radiation emissions. Accurately capturing these phenomena requires advanced simulations that can handle the multifaceted interactions of plasma physics, relativistic effects, and electromagnetic fields on both small and large scales. As a result, significant theoretical and computational work is needed to refine Lerner's model and validate its predictions against observational data from AGNs. By comparison, the mainstream model benefits from well-established theoretical foundations, extensive observational data, and a wide array of developed computational tools. Prior to the observed flare in OJ287, researchers utilizing the mainstream model were able to make specific predictions about the timing and characteristics of such events based on detailed calculations of the black hole's orbit and interactions with the accretion disk. Lerner's plasmoid model, being in its nascent stages, involves pioneering new approaches and dealing with the inherent complexities of plasma physics and magnetic reconnection on a theoretical front. It faces significant challenges without increased fundings and a larger community of researchers. Developing this model requires detailed theoretical work and complex computational simulations to accurately represent the dynamics and often turbulent behavior in plasmoids. These tasks demand substantial resources, including access to advanced supercomputing facilities and cutting-edge observational instruments. Moreover, attracting and training more scientists to work on plasmoid-related research is crucial to drive innovation and validate the model's predictions through observational data. Without a concerted effort to secure additional funding and expand the research community, progress in understanding and substantiating the plasmoid model will likely be slow and limited. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.